Okay, we're starting section 8.4 today with direct, joint, and inverse variation of functions. Compared to what we've been doing, this is a pretty straightforward section. So, here's the idea. We're talking about direct variation. As one variable increases, the other increases or decreases at a constant rate. So we'd say that two variables are directly related. When you say two variables are directly related, you know you have a linear function. So, for example, y equals kx, uh, you might have a graph where the line is going upwards, k would be a positive slope, or you might, in the second one, have a negative slope, in which case k would be negative. But you should notice that k does represent the slope of this particular function. k is what we're calling our constant of variation, and we'll be using k throughout uh, this unit or chapter section. So direct variation, pretty straightforward. So, a couple example problems. Uh, y varies directly as x. If x equals 12 and y equals 8, then find x when y equals 18. So you're going to solve that by setting up a simple ratio. First of all, you'll solve for k, and you'll get k equals y over x. So y is directly related to x, so therefore y equals kx, so then k is y over x. And once you get that, you can solve any of these problems using just simple proportions. So you'll say k is 8 over 12, because y was 8 and x was 12. But that's going to equal the other y over x, which is 18 over x. So now you can solve your proportion by cross-multiplying and then canceling. So pretty quickly, I get 8x equals 12 times 18. I factored those out just so I can um, solve quickly and I'll get x equals 27. Okay, so next one, pretty simple. Again, cross multiply and then cancel and solve. So uh, next one, t varies directly as r. So t equals k times r, or some constant times r. Um, and we can solve for k and get k equals t over r. Um, knowing that, we can now set up a series of ratios. Um, because we have negative 4 over 10, or t over r, negative 4 over 10, and that's got to equal our, our other t over r, since they're constant and equal to each other, therefore, we'll get t over 40. Now we have t over 40, all we have to do is cross multiply and simplify. We'll get 10t equals negative 4 times 40. Pretty easy, divide both sides by 10 and you'll get t equals negative 16. And that's our final solution. So again, directly variation, you solve for the constant and get a little uh, ratio, and then you can set those ratios to find missing values. Okay, inverse variation. As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So we say that two uh, variables are inversely related, when one goes up and the other one goes down. Uh, in terms of a function, you write that as y equals k over x or k times y, I'm sorry, x times y equals the constant k, uh, with again k being your constant variation. If you want to graph a function like that, this looks a lot like what we had when we were doing uh, y, uh, f of x equals 1 over x except we don't have the negative part of the graph. We're just looking at the positive part, and that's typical um, when we're looking at these um, inversely related functions. So, moving on. So, uh, another way to say this is that y would vary inversely with x. Okay, so if we have an example where we say d varies inversely as e, then we'd say d is equal to some constant divided by e. So that's how d and e are inversely related, with k being our constant. Now once again, we're going to solve for k, and then we're going to set um, up little proportions and set them equal to each other. So we get k equals d times e. So 1 dE is going to equal the other dE. So we'll get 27 times 1 ninth. That's 1 d times e, and that's got to equal our other one, which we know d is 3 times the other e which we don't know, and now we're just going to solve for e. 27 divided by 9 divided by 3 is equal to 1. Pretty straightforward. Okay, 
joint variation. This is where one variable directly depends on or varies with two or more other variables. So you have a constant, k, times a series of variables, x, y, and z. Um, k, again, is our constant of variation. And we see these kinds of functions, especially in chemistry, where you'll find the pressure related to the volume and the temperature, and you want to find out what kind of relationship they have, and then you can solve problems. So k is our constant variation. Here is an example problem. We say y varies jointly as w, x, and the square of z. So we'll write that y equals k times w times x times z squared. Notice it says the square of z, so we have a z squared term at the end. Okay, so then I'll solve for k and get k equals y over w, x, and z squared. So now I can use the constant to tell set one set of values equal to the other. So I get 36 over 6 times 1 half times 4 quantity squared. That is my first set of terms right here. First set of terms right there. And that has to equal my second set of terms over here. So y over 5 times 2 times 1 sixth quantity squared. So now I just need to simplify and solve for y. We cross multiply or in this case I'm just going to multiply by 5 times 2 times 1 6 squared. So simplifying I'll get solve for y. 36 times 5 times 2 times 1 6 quantity squared all over 6 times 1 half times 4 squared. Now I'm going to simplify those fractions. I don't like fractions in numerators or denominators so I'm going to move the 1 6 quantity squared downstairs and the 1 half upstairs. So it's just multiplying by the reciprocal, essentially. When I rewrite those, I get... Now, in this case, I've taken the 1 half and moved it up. I've taken the 1 sixth squared and moved it down to become 6 squared. Remember, multiplying by a fraction is the same as um, multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's what I've done, okay? So now I can go ahead and cancel out what I can and see what's left. And I'll 636 cancel with 6 squares. My 4 cancels with one of the 4 squares and I'm left with 5 over 24. That looks funny. Let's fix that. 5 over 24. Okay, moving on. A couple real-world examples to show you. In chemistry, we have an expression called Boyle's Law, which says that, it's hard to read it down here, but P, the pressure, times the volume, is equal to a constant. And they say C, but I'm going to call it K just to keep it um, consistent. So, because Pressure times volume is a constant. That was you heat something up, um, both its volume gets bigger and its, vo and its uh, pressure gets bigger. You can say that pressure, or in this case volume, is equal to K over P. So we see that they can be inversely related if you want to say what, what's happening with the volume and pressure. And that's what we're seeing here with an inverse type of curve. Okay, Volume is inversely related to pressure. Next example. For Charles' law, we have the volume is, this is another chemistry law, same idea with um, volume and pressures. Volume is a constant times the temperature if we keep the um, pressure the same. So that's going to give us a direct relationship or a straight line type of curve right here. So that we see the volume and the temperature are directly related. So we have a linear graph. And finally we have pressure versus height um, where pressure is constant. Now so here's the expression we say height is pressure divided by rho g or sometimes we write it as p equals rho g h and that gives you how the pressure varies as a function of height. So for example if you go underwater the deeper you go underwater the pressure becomes much much higher. And that pressure and the height are related by this constant, rho times g. Rho is the density of the water, g is gravity. Um, you can also see that there's a pressure versus height variation just in atmospheric air. 
So you're, when you're close to the surface of the Earth, you have really high pressure. When you get it really high, top of the mountains of Mount Everest, you get pretty low pressure. That's one of the reasons they have to bring oxygen tanks, because there's not enough oxygen in the air, because it's such low pressure up there. So, if we look at the curve relationship, oops, went back too far, let me go back for just a second. If you look at the curve relationship, you see that height is related to air pressure by a constant. So height is inversely related to pressure, and that's what we're showing here. That's why we get this inverse kind of a curve. All right, and finally, in physics, Newton's second law, we say F equals ma, force equals mass times acceleration. Um, so you could say that the force is directly related to the acceleration uh, as you keep the mass constant. So what that means is if you push something with a force, it's going to accelerate. The higher the force, the higher acceleration. We say they're directly related. So a graph of that would look like force, acceleration, would look like this. Now, we're going to talk about acceleration is related to mass. We say acceleration is the force divided by the mass. So we'll say that acceleration is inversely related to the mass if you keep the force constant. So that's why we have an acceleration and a mass on our curve, acceleration versus mass, and we get that inverse relationship. We use these kind of graphs all the time in the real world. It's good to get to look at them, recognize exactly what kind of relationship we're talking about. And that concludes this lesson.